Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about shortcuts, key commands, macros, and other such stuff. The idea of a key command in Cubase refers to basically hitting some kind of key on your computer keyboard and then triggering a function or action in Cubase. A typical example is hitting a particular computer key and then Cubase begins recording. Or another example is to hit some kind of computer key and then the mixer shows up in the project view. Cubase initially has all kinds of predefined key commands, but it is not unusual for a user over time to create their own key commands and possibly customize existing key commands that were already included in Cubase to begin with. Today I want to share with you some of my particular key commands and macros so I can show you how I use these to speed up my workflow and at the same time help you to understand some of the ways you can build these, making use of basic options, but then taking it into the project logical editor and things like that. Okay, the first one I want to show you is a fairly recent addition to my group of key commands. I've assigned one that allows me to select a track, hit the assign key command, and only have that track visible. And then I have another key command that I can hit and all my tracks return back into view. In my workflow, that is something I do all the time. And there's so many reasons why I've been kind of moved to do that. One main reason is the way it clears up your desktop and gets things out of the way, especially when you have the lower zone down here. If you have a whole bunch of tracks to scroll through, it's a lot more work than if you just have one. Another thing that I have found, many times when I start using automation, if I have all these tracks in place and I hit the right automation button, sometimes Cubase will actually jump to another track, or do something in the middle of me trying to write my automation. There's a few other reasons as well. So this idea of being able to just isolate a track quickly bring out all the other tracks has become an essential part of my workflow. Now where Cubase has these kind of options, up at the top, there's a thing called the Track Visibility Agents. If you haven't explored this, it's worth your time to go through these options. They're all very good. There's ones that say show the tracks with data, show the tracks with the cursor position. There's advanced agents down here. And every one of these in different situations is really valuable. The problem is that they're in these menus. So when you're going through your workflow, and especially if you have a lot of tracks going on, by the time you come out of the track you're working on, or make sure that the one you are working on is selected, go up and find your visibility agent search through the list, pick the one you want, and then perform the operation. Sometimes you're ready to quit your session. Finding out ways to assign these to a key command is a real essential thing. Where you can begin looking for these, you go up to edit, come down to key commands. As you look down your main list, you have one category that says channel and track visibility. Again, this is worth your time to just explore all these options in general. But when you first open it up, you have all kinds of options for the agents. You can hide muted tracks, hide the selected tracks, and on and on. I went down to the one that said agents show all channels. This is the one that's going to bring everything into view in case I have something hidden. And then I assigned a key to it. For me, I just put the number one here. What's nice about what Cubase did here, in case you assign a key that's already been used, it's going to tell you, and you can make the decision if you want to continue on. There's probably more than a few key commands that you have that you're never going to use the way they are, so why not make them into something that you will use? The next thing I did is I went down this list. I found the one that said, Agents, show only the selected channels and or tracks, and I assigned the Alt plus one to that. To do any assignments, all you have to do is click in place here, type your key or key combination in. There's no save or anything to do here. Just close your screen out. And from that point on, anytime I hit a track and I hit the alt key and number one, I only have that track. And when I hit the number one again, I have all my tracks. I can't tell you how useful that shortcut has become from the typical way that I used to go, looking through the menus and trying to find my option every time. And while we're looking at things here, you may have noticed that I'm using this what's called split screen. That's activated by going over on the right and there's a little slash that says divide the track. I did that once way back in the early days of Cubase when I started using the chord track, markers, and other things that I just wanted visible all the time. Once I learned I could divide my project into two windows, I never went back again. This has become essential to my workflow because I can always keep these other items up in this upper divided list while I'm working on other things in the project. The drawback to having this divided list is Cubase actually looks at these as two separate windows. So many times when you'll make a selection, it will only cover one window or the other. You'll find yourself performing operations you think affect your whole project. When you're using a divided window, you have to pay attention to what window you're actually working in. I'm going to show you a couple of other commands coming up that actually override this, and those are great options to know as well. Okay, the next ones I want to show you 
We go back to our key commands. We look down, we have a category that says chords. Open that up. Again, you want to take some time and explore these. There's all kinds of great options in here. There's a couple that I use. But the one I want to point you to, there's one that says chord track and chords to MIDI. I've assigned Alt C to that. What that allows me to do is I create a track, make sure it's highlighted, and I have chords up on my chord track. I just hit Alt C on my keyboard and I immediately have my chords moved onto my track. Backing out of that, if we go to the category called Project, again, fantastic options in here, but I have one down here that says Duplicate the Tracks. For that, I've assigned Alt D. For example, I go back to the track I just created with the chord track on it. I hit Alt D and immediately I have a new track. This next one, for many years, I had my own macro that I had created, but with a new version of Cubase, they now decided this one was worthy to just include into the key commands. And the one I'm referring to, if you go back up to your edit menu, you have a category down here that says macros, depending on what version of Cubase you have. The bottom here says selected tracks to new folder and add a group channel. This one has a key command of control G. I can't remember if I assigned that or it came that way, but again, to assign your key command, in this case, look for a category that says macro. And if you look down this list, selected tracks to new folder and group, it may be abbreviated the wording, but right there you can add your key command. Select the tracks you want to group. In my case, I hit Control G, give it a name. Then all those tracks are routed to their own group where I can easily change the volume. They're all placed in a folder, easily organized. Just a great option and macro to have. Sometimes an operation that you want to carry out for one reason or another just isn't available. Let me show you an example of that. Before us, we have a number of tracks. Some of these are audio tracks and other ones are MIDI tracks that I've disabled. You can always right click on any track and choose the option to disable the selected tracks, freeze up resources, just gets tracks out of the way that you don't want to use, but maybe you don't want to delete them yet. But back up on our visibility agent, we actually have an option that says hide the disabled tracks. And if I click on that, it takes those tracks out of view, which is great. But when I press my number one button, bring all my tracks back into view to make another track selection, all my disabled tracks come into view as well. And I don't want to see those disabled tracks. But strangely, if we go to edit and down to our key commands, in the same category of agents, it has pretty much all the other choices. You can hide muted tracks, hide selected tracks, and on and on all these agents. They didn't put one in here to hide the disabled tracks, which is exactly the function I want and only the function that I want. So what can we do in that situation? This is where we can make use of things called the logical editor, or in this case, the project logical editor. You find that by going to project and down to an option that says project logical editor. And if we come over to the option that says setup, then we get this screen. And this allows us to do some things that each of us may want individually for our own custom uses that aren't included anywhere else in Cubase. So how do we use this thing? Sometimes you can get a preset in here that's close enough to what you want and then just change it a little bit. But because I want to hide something, in this case my disabled tracks, I go up here and type the word hide. As I look down the list, in this case in my factory presets, I have one that says hide all. So let's try to start there and see what we get. If we examine this, it tells us it's going to select a track or it's going to select a folder track. And the bottom, it tells us it's going to hide it if we hit the apply button. So if we look at this and make a few changes, if I go to the second line where it says container type and click on that and change it to the name that says property, set the condition to is set and then change this property to, we're given an option for disabled. So I'm going to click on that, change this or to and. And now if I look at my disabled tracks and I come over and hit this apply button, I can see that it removed my disabled tracks. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. Now, how can I assign this to a shortcut key? I have to save this preset. So I come back to the drop down list, take the option to save the changes as a preset, give it a name, save it. And then when we come back to our key commands under edit key commands, we actually have a category down here that says process the project logical editor. And if I open that up, all the presets in that logical editor all the factory ones, as well as the ones that I've created for myself personally, are all in this list now. So I scroll down the bottom of the list. I can see the one that I created. I usually put my name by my presets. It makes it super easy to find them later. Anybody that's ever searched for presets knows exactly what I'm talking about. But I select that preset. Then I come over and type a key that I want. In this case, I'm just going to use the number two as an example. And now when I have my disabled tracks in place, if I just hit the number two on my keyboard, they are removed from view. So not only can you assign the typical things you would do, but if you can't find something that you want, many times you can create it in one of the logical editors and then save that as a key command. Okay, I want to show you one more and then we're going to put it into a macro as well. I discovered this one fairly late in my Cubase journey. If you take any event and select it, you have a typical Cubase shortcut 
control D. It allows you to duplicate that event. And that's a great one to have. And you can hit it as many times and duplicate things really fast. Also, if you take your range tool, you make a range selection, you can do that same control duplicate. That's a great option. But notice how it ignores my upper zone, even when I try to duplicate it. If I go up into the upper zone, I can only select up there. I can hold control and come back down, but no matter how you look at it, it's kind of cumbersome, especially when you have this divided window. But there's an option, and this depends on where your locators are. So let's set them over all of this stuff. If you go up to the edit menu, come down to the option that says range. There's one in here that says global copy. And unlike a regular copy, this copies everything. It copies all the information in my upper zone, all the information in my lower zone, chord events if I have them, if there were markers, everything gets copied. And if I move my cursor to where I want to paste it and hit control V, everything gets pasted. That was a real discovery when I found that one. The problem is it's a lot of steps if I'm trying to move along quick in my project. So let me show you this macro I made and it may be useful to you. Manually we have to start by setting the locator. Then we're going to perform the global copy. Then we want this cursor to go to the far end of the selection and there's a shortcut for that. And then we want to paste this global copy. And then finally what I want to do is move this selection over these new pasted events. And typically if you hit the letter P on your keyboard, it does that, which then allows us to do the whole thing all over again and continue on pretty much as simply as doing a control duplicate of a single event. So there's four different things we have to create there. Let's go to our edit, key commands. We want to start by creating the macro. So we hit new macro, double click on it, rename it. I'm going to call it global copy paste. Then at the top, I need to find global copy. So I type that in. It's right here. I highlight it, say add the command. Then I need go to right locator. I'll just type in right locator. It shows up right here. I select it, say add the command. Then I want to do a paste. I look right here, edit, paste, select it, say add the command. And finally, I want to do locators to selection. Just put down locators, come down the list, select that, and say add the command. Again, when you create these macros, you don't have to do a save. It's automatic. So now I have that macro. The last thing I want to do, I need to create a key command to actually run my macro. So I don't have to look that up in the menu. So I go back up to the top list, look for macro, find that particular one right here, global copy, paste. And then I need to assign a key to it. For me, I'm just going to put down Control, Alt, and the number 2. So I'm going to use three separate keys. Back in my project, I begin by setting the locators. I'm going to hit Alt, Control, 2. And just like that, it creates everything. I can do the same thing again, Control, Alt, 2. And I can continue this way. And just as easy as duplicating a single event, I can copy and paste everything in my project as many times as necessary. So by giving a little thought to what you do over and over in your production workflow, you're going to see that there's probably more than a few options to streamline those repetitions. Because really, after all, as much as we all enjoy the amazing features and technology, what's best is when we can use these features to ultimately move the technology out of the way and get to that thing that really matters, making the music. I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, and WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a look at the subject of shortcuts, key commands, and macros. I gave you some examples of my specific key commands. We talked about the difference between the stock key commands versus using your own customized key commands. We looked at how to take the project logical editor, create a preset from that, and then incorporate Incorporate that into a shortcut. And then I showed you the option of how you can do a global copy that can mimic a simple duplicate of an event. And we will continue to move through all these different creative options and the tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I will see you on the next video.